Welcome to the Windy Dome, uh, Windy with three E's, that's Wind en Engineering, Wind Energy and Wind Environment. Uh, I'm Andrew Mathers, I'm the Operations Manager here. Uh, and we're uh, doing a quick tour of the facility. You're in the uh, last leg of it in the test chamber. Uh, this is our hexagonal test chamber, 25 meters flat to flat. Uh, our building envelope is also a hexagon, 25 meters flat to flat. Uh, we have 106 individually controlled fans in the facility, 100 on this level and six more large ones upstairs. And uh, we essentially are able to produce uh, almost any type of naturally occurring flow. Uh, straight flows, gusting flows, shear flows, and then uh, our highlight ones are tornado and downburst. Uh, so quick explanation of how some of those flows work. Right now we're actually configured uh, in our high speed mode for doing atmospheric boundary layer and straight flow testing. So we have a nozzle or a contraction assembly uh, installed in front of our 60 fan wall. That nozzle assembly squeezes our flow. Uh, we're generally putting the flow in in one direction. So it's coming out of the nozzle at upwards of 100 kilometers per hour across the center of our test chamber, out through the back, and recirculates vertically. Uh, we're operating right now in a closed circuit for circulating flow. Uh, we're preparing right now to install a pressure model, uh, a NIST model. Uh, essentially, it's a comparative model for us to uh, look at our results as compared to other wind tunnels around the world. Uh, this is something kind of part of our internal research as far as studying uh, the flow within our facility itself rather than an external research project. Some other flows that we can do at this facility, if we remove that nozzle, we then can use the 60 fan wall. We have individual control of each one of those fans. That allows us to produce wind profiles that vary with wind speed left to right, top to bottom. Uh, we can also do gusting flows at up to one hertz. Uh, almost any wind profile within a 14 meter wide, 3.8 meter tall test area. That allows us to do very large models uh, or very large landscapes. Um, topographies representing uh, whole wind farms or, or full scale models of small wind turbines and solar panels. Lastly, uh, or the last two modes are what we call axis symmetric modes. So they're symmetric about the center line of this facility. Uh, for downburst, we have uh, a bell melt in the center of the test chamber. It has louvers inside of it. We shut those louvers. There's six large fans upstairs that feed into a common plenum. We pressurize that plenum. And when we open the louver quickly, that gives us a jet of air downward. And when it hits the ground, it rolls out in all directions. Uh, this is a typical thunderstorm type flow. It's very damaging. Uh, you'll often hear about them uh, down in power lines. Uh, and so it's been studied quite a bit uh, or is being studied quite a bit, uh, especially in relation to hydroelectric transmission lines. Uh, the other last flow is our tornado uh, type flows. So for that, we use the lower row of fans on all six sides. You'll notice there's louvers in front of them. We actually have the ability to angle those louvers and set the angle of them. We inject air from all six sides uh, at those angles. That gives us a swirl inside the center of the test chamber. Up through that bell mouth, we produce a suction with those same six large fans as the downburst, and that combination of swirl and suction gives us the tornado. The key here is to uh, set up the fans, the louvers, in the correct orientation to produce true scale tornado type flows. Uh, there's some other facilities that will produce unnatural vortexes, uh, but what we've done here is we've actually gone and characterized what we're producing uh, our true. Uh, EF0, EF1, and EF2 type tornado flows. One of the other unique capabilities of the facility is the ability to translate the tornado. So that bell mouth right now is centered, uh, but we do have the ability to translate it up to two meters per second across a, a landscape or a, a building. So we can look at the dynamic aspect of a tornado at moving across a structure or moving across a landscape uh, and the differences between that and some of your other types of gusting flows, hurricanes, dampers. Excellent. So can you tell me a bit about these blocks on the floor? What are these do? So these are what we call roughness elements. These can extend out of the ground to a maximum of 30 centimeters. That allows us to control the overall roughness of the ground. Uh, so in uh, civil applications in boundary layer wind tunnels, which is what this generally would fall into as a category versus aerospace and automotive, we're concerned with the roughness and the terrain uh, and its effect on the wind profile itself. So these are one of the methods that we use to actually uh, adjust the wind profile for both for all of our modes actually uh, to simulate different environments. 
suburb and urban, they all have different roughness levels and, and at different scales we need to be able to reproduce that. So we use these uh, as part of that methodology. They're controlled automatically in 24 different zones and there's just under 1,600 individual units. Okay. Let's take a look at the bell. The uh, five meter diameter lift and turntable is in a lower position right now uh, as we're prepping for a test. Uh, and it's much easier for us to do that preparation uh, and instrumentation work down in the lower level. Uh, we then raise this lift and turntable into the opening here uh, until it's flush with the rest of the test chamber floor uh, and we can lock it in place for testing. Once we have it upstairs, we can also rotate that model to test it for different wind exposures.